So the headphone and audio world has a new mid-fi contender. It is the Aun AR5000. And I just, I just like to say it that way. Uh, this is a dynamic driver moving coil open back headphone that comes in at $300. And this is where everybody's gonna be asking, but is it better than the Sennheiser HD600, the Hi-Fi Man Sundara, and the other well-established headphones that have been dominating this price bracket? So let's talk about it. Just a couple of quick disclaimers. This unit was sent over by Joe from Gadgetry Tech. Uh, so big thanks to Joe for sending it in. Make sure you check out his channel and say hi from me. He's got a review of this one out as well. So uh, do your due diligence and watch that as well. As usual, I do not get paid to say anything in particular about this. I do not get to keep it and all thoughts and opinions here are my own. And lastly, this video is made possible by headphones.com. If you want to support what we do here, consider checking out headphones.com for your next audio purchase. Okay, let's get started. And I'm gonna begin by giving my subjective take on how this sounds, and then we'll get into the measurements later on in the video. There will be timestamps linked below if you'd like to skip to that. But in the past, I've structured videos where I show the measurements first, and I think people have gotten the wrong idea that I'm measuring before listening, and then that's informing my judgment on the headphone. So let me be very clear. We always, always listen before measuring. Um, so maybe this will help with some of that confusion. In any case, the Aun AR5000, how does it sound? Uh, it sounds good, especially for the price. I am very pleasantly surprised by this one. And especially if you like mids, which I do. So there's a general forward character to the mids in this headphone in comparison to the bass and the treble. So right away, this is not a headphone to consider if you are looking for extra bass or extra treble. Uh, this one is much more about the mid-range and clarity for the mid-range. So it's got that kind of tonally rich, warm character that other headphones, you might be thinking of like the 6XX, it's similar to that one in that regard. And I find this presentation does wonders for vocal recordings and acoustic instruments. So again, think natural, pleasant, lush, occasionally a bit overly forward in the mids, but not in a way that I'm bothered by. The bass is well extended, so it's present, but it's just not bass boosted. So you don't hear it kind of dominating over the rest of the range at all. And the treble is mostly solid without any major harmonic imbalances that I could detect at least. Maybe the tiniest little bit of glare in the lower treble, but not offensively so. And the one thing with this headphone is that the upper treble is a bit pulled back and relaxed in comparison to the rest of the voicing here. So while the treble still comes through in a very, you know, clear manner, you can still hear all the treble, it's not like super dull or anything like that, it's just that the upper treble air is not as present as it, as you might find with something like a Hi-Fi Man Edition X or an, a Focal Alex or some of those that have a bit more, you know, treble sharpness to them, right? So it's not quite as articulate in that sense. But that's a trade-off that I think many people will be more than okay with. Um, it's the kind of sound signature that's made me go through all of my favorite acoustic albums again. So like Alboran Trio for piano recordings, or Ulf Wakenius for jazz acoustic guitar. And for the general sound signature here with this more mid-forward character, I find it kind of brings forward the fundamental regions of a lot of acoustic instrument tones. And it's, it's the kind of thing that can be very enjoyable. For soundstage, or as I like to call it, the spaciousness effect, I'd say it feels appropriate. So it's not overly intimate or claustrophobic, but it's also not unnaturally spacious sounding either. It's like a medium sense of spaciousness, uh, and I think it's totally fine in that regard. As for that sense of detail and resolution, uh, this isn't at all blunted sounding, so it doesn't sound like you know, you're know you kind of listening forward to hear more of the trailing ends of tones that are in the music that you know are there. That's it. There's no issues with that. It's just that... The upper treble air, like I mentioned, is a bit kind of pulled back and withdrawn. Uh, and as a consequence, you know, you can still hear the finer little nuances and details in the music. You just don't necessarily hear them quite as clearly as you would on something like an HD 600. Or if you have headphones, if you're comparing with headphones, again, like the Edition XS that have more of that sort of treble presence to them, it doesn't draw your attention to those tones quite as much. So I find my attention gets more drawn to the sort of lush and euphonic character of the mid-range, um, and the treble is just sort of this nice, smooth kind of pillow on top, <laughs> if that makes sense. So that is how it sounds to me. Now let's look at the objective stuff, the measurements. And here, of course, we're talking about frequency response. This is how you can get a sense of how something is likely to sound to you. So I'm throwing the graphs up on the screen here. If you're new to reading any of this stuff, there will be links in the description to help with that. As we've done videos on this for how to make sense of it, um, there's also a link in the upper corner here. But in short, 
As I've said before, there are many ways for things to sound bad, few ways for things to sound good, and when they do, the response typically falls somewhere within the shaded area here. And we show it like this because preferences fall within a range. So for the own, things are mostly solid here uh, for that kind of sound signature that I mentioned. This is, of course, an open back headphones. I don't really expect it to have a bass boost. Uh, and, you know, it doesn't. But for an open back headphone, the bass response here is actually really solid and better than what you get with the HD6 series. I'm comparing a lot to the HD6 series because I do think this headphone stacks up well against it. Now, as you can see here, the mids are, as mentioned, a bit forward, giving it that richer presentation. Um, there seems to be this kind of notch feature between 3 and 4 kilohertz. And then there's a slightly forward lower treble and then, again, as mentioned, a relaxed upper treble. These are fairly minor things, and I don't know how perceptually relevant it's going to be to you, but this is one area where I would say the HD600 still does better than the Aon AR5000 in this sort of treble range. Um, but here's the thing. There are aspects of the Aon AR5000 that are definitely better, objectively better, than the HD600. One is, of course, the bass extension, so that's fairly straightforward here. But the other is that the Aon does better for harmonic distortion. So here you can see the harmonic distortion character and distortion is related to level. So for those who are wanting to push the bass with EQ, you can definitely do that with this headphone. Of course, I did make an EQ profile for this and it handled it like a champ. Here you can see the results. And if you're interested in trying that, I've left a link in the description to the profile for that. But also, this headphone is a great candidate for EQ. Yes, because it's easy to do without having to do, you know, a ton of fine-grained filters, but also because it's ergonomically excellent. So we'll talk about that here a little bit. It's not as lightweight as the HD600 series, but it's also not as clampy. And it also has full cup swivel, well, not like completely around, but it has cup swivel, which is something the Hi-Fi Man Sundara doesn't have, which is something that I complain about to no end. And the build quality on this also feels pretty good. Uh, there is plastic on it, there are bits of plastic, but the headband piece is fully metal here. Uh, the clicks feel solid for the arms, and then you get this really wide leather, uh, leather-ish, I, I think it's leather, strap underneath. All headband straps should be wide, let it be known. Now, one other thing, and time will tell how the pads wear in with this headphone and how they affect the sound, but I fully expect the sound signature to stay more consistent than what you get with the HD6 series, where the sound gets a lot warmer as the pads wear in. So with this one, the pads feel a bit more robust, and I'm optimistic about that, you know, lasting longer over time. Now, if you're looking for a bunch of comparisons uh, for the measurements, I will have left those linked in the description on the forum thread for this headphone. Uh, but I just want to say I do feel that it stacks up very well and very competitively with the other headphones that are sort of dominating this price bracket. So like the HD600, like the Sundara, like the Edition XS, like the DT900 Pro X. I don't actually know how expensive that one is, but um, that's an interesting comparison. But again, for the measurements of that, you can look in the description. Overall, I'm really impressed with this headphone. And I'm glad that this price range has gotten a new contender that I would genuinely consider purchasing. And it's a lot better than many headphones costing significantly more. Like, I'd take this over an HD660 S2, for example. But the question is, is it better than the existing headphones in this range that have sort of dominated the market, like I mentioned? And the answer is, it really depends on what you're looking for. And I know that that's not satisfying. <laughs> um, but, for example, if you're more interested in airy, sparkly treble, the Aoun may not be for you. You're better off with an Edition XS or a Focal Alex or maybe an HD 490 Pro. I'm pointing at things because I have them here. <laughs> but if you're all about the mids, about the mids, about the mids, <laughs> and you want that warm, rich, lush presentation, the Aoun has some massive upsides that could make it worth strongly considering even over some of those more well-established headphones in this price range, like the HD6 series, like the Sundaras, and so forth. Again, that's with that asterisk that it's for people who want that mid-range focused sound. I know there are a lot of people out there who are like, I just want lots of bass and lots of treble. I want my V-shaped tunings for big excitement. <laughs> and no, that's, that's not what you get here with this at all. Uh, but if you are not that kind of person, definitely put the Aoun AR5000 on your radar. I am particularly smitten with this one, and I think a lot of people looking for this kind of sound signature will be too. So yes, I definitely recommend this headphone, especially for those wanting that kind of warm, smooth, rich, lush presentation. Easy recommendation for me. And that is all I have to say about this headphone for today. If you found any of this useful, consider subscribing. Imagine seeing my smiling face every time we post a new video. How about that? How about that indeed? Okay, I'm out of here. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.